First of all, I would like to say that vaccinations are one of the greatest medical advances of the 20th century. Ensuring safety and the public trust of vaccinations is more important than ever. Vaccinations have saved many, many lives. Millions of children a year are saved because of vaccinations in 2020. Vaccinations are very, very safe. However, every once in a while, maybe one out of 100,000 vaccinations can result in a complication. And the most common complication of a vaccination is something known as vaccination-related shoulder dysfunction. It's something that I discovered in 2007 here in Napa. And it's also been termed since then shoulder injury related to vaccine administration or SIRVA, S-I-R-V-A. This uh, can happen if the vaccination is provided a little bit too high in the shoulder and too deep. And I'll, sh I'll show you with this model. This is a model of the shoulder. This is the deltoid muscle right here. And the a vaccination should be provided right here in the middle, right in the thick part of the deltoid muscle right here, like that. Once in a while, the vaccination will go up here. That can happen if the person is standing and the, and the person receiving it is sitting. Or if you go to a pharmacy and instead of pulling your shirt up, you pull it down, then you're only exposing the top part. If it goes here, and if it goes too deep, because it's very easy to go too deep here, it can go to the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is only a quarter of an inch below the skin to half an inch below the skin in most people. And it's right here. So if it goes into the rotator cuff, the vaccine can cause inflammation and pain. And this probably happens much more often than one out of 100,000 times. So we think that there is an additional factor that's involved, maybe something genetic or maybe just something idiosyncratic, just like someone can be allergic to peanuts. And if all three conditions are met, the injection goes too high, it goes too deep, and the person has a predisposition, then you can have chronic pain there. But about two thirds of patients, despite having uh, physical therapy, injections, maybe even arthroscopic surgery, about two thirds of them were going on and having chronic pain. So we came up with a solution. It actually, the idea came from a patient. She's a hydrogeologist in New Mexico, a PhD. And she had this problem and she came to me and said, wouldn't there be a way that we could just clean it out by putting fluid in there? That's what we do in geology. We pump fluid under underground and, and it will go and uh, separate the layers of rock and then we can get things up, get minerals up and so on. It's called uh, hydrogeology. And so that was her idea and it kind of sat in my head for a while and then about a year later a patient came to me and, and, and she was having chronic pain and, and we went ahead and tried it. What we did was we used a device, it's called the 10X device, and it's a needle with a vibrating tip and it breaks up any kind of debris and it breaks up and it cleans up the deposited substances. Substances that might be deposited in a tendon, they get broken up and it also can suck up uh, necrotic, meaning dead tissue or, or bone that's, that's uh, potentially injured and, and uh, inflamed. Anything that's abnormal can get vibrated and it will get sucked out. So I think it's a, in a way it's like a clean out. So what we needed to do, first of all, was to identify the spot where the injury occurred. And sometimes that's not as easy as it would seem. Sometimes the MRI, just as often as not, is negative. It doesn't show any abnormality. Or the abnormalities it shows are not related to where the pain is. So what we first do is we do a careful ultrasound of that area, and we find out exactly where the tenderness is the worst. And then I go in with the probe, and I go into that part of the rotator cuff for that probe, the part that we previously identified, and the needle vibrates at 28,000 times per second. And it breaks up what we think. It breaks, up the, breaks off the vaccine molecules off of the collagen molecules. So it, it basically cleans it off. And what we found was uh, up as early as two days later, patients start noticing an improvement. They feel like this chronic ache that they had was getting better. And in the five patients we've done thus far, actually we've even done a, uh, two more since then, in the five that we are presenting in our up and coming article, 
the pain improved and the function improved substantially within the first two weeks. On average, the patients had had symptoms uh, for 20 months, well, a year and a half, more than a year and a half. But within two weeks, uh, they were substantially improved. And we followed these patients for six months and they have continued to improve.